he's going to join us now. Mr. Eddie Hearn, how are we, sir? Very good, thank you. Very good. I was just trying to get over the excitement of the 5v5. Yeah. Queen's I said, you know, you this do? could be bigger than the Undisputed Heavyweight <laughs> World Championship. No, amazing. Uh, you know, great press conference and another incredible turnout. And what a time for boxing. You know, within five months, we've seen Fury and Garnu, the Day of Reckoning, Fury oh, against Usyk, um, and of course, Joshua against Ngannou now, March the 8th. And, you know, the, the talk of Bivol better be it just doesn't stop. And, and this is exactly what we've wanted for so long. You were stood in the middle of those two giants, oh. those man mountains. Mm. What was the feeling of it? I mean, just like two incredible, like you said, the best word, mountains, atoms. I mean, you know, Francis Ngannou was talking. I was looking at him thinking, look at the size of your head, your neck. I turned, actually turned to Asia and I thought, actually, you look like a middleweight compared to this guy, you know, I mean, it's the first time actually AJ has ever competed with anyone who is remotely the same in terms of frame and mass. This guy's bigger. So we hear the stories about how strong he is. We hear the stories about how hard he can punch. I still find it difficult to subscribe to. I don't believe you can just stroll into the sport and beat the elite. But he so nearly did it against what many regard as the best heavyweight in the world. So we take him very, very seriously. It's a fight full of jeopardy, but one that if you use your brain and you use your skill and your speed, I believe you should win. Neither one of them, though, has been on the cover of Men's Health recently. <laughs> well, look, you know, if they continue their search for greatness, they will get there. It's always interesting to kind of get a gauge of where they're at at these press conferences a good few weeks out because generally fighters are a bit more relaxed and you just know from listening to Anthony that he looks at Ngannou and he feels like he's got good enough fundamentals to be a challenge but that mentally he's got what it takes he knows that mentally he's got what it takes and that this is a guy if I'm going to break his will it's going to be a tough job and how do you break that will when you know the backstory, when you know what this guy went through to get to where he is today? You know this is a serious dude. You know, when you're talking about, you know, going through countries and, and you know, through rivers and seas to get to where he needs to be to, to achieve his dream. This is a man full of resilience. This is a man full of strength. This is a man full of will. And, and you have to break that will. AJ summed it up personally, you've got to break his soul and break his will. But you do that with force and speed because it doesn't matter how much will you've got, when you get hit hard on the chin, you can get taken out. And that goes both ways. So, you know, one of the big takeaways from this press conference was, again, His Excellency's vision of the winner of this fight fights the winner of Fury Usyk for the Undisputed Heavyweight World Championship. I mean, for Ngannou to fight for the Undisputed Championship in his third fight could be a rematch with Fury. You know, he could become Undisputed Heavyweight World Champion. For us and for AJ, we've dreamed about that for so many years. I just said to AJ before the face-to-face, -face, two wins, you're Undisputed Heavyweight World Champion. And I believe he's going to do it. I really do. I know I'm a fanboy. I know I'm a, but, but, but I, I believe he's going to beat Ngannou. Then I believe he's going to beat Tyson Fury. And, you know, I would just say February the 17th, Alexander Usi, I love you. But Tyson Fury, you've got to win this fight. Because AJ, once he goes for Ngannou, we've got to make it happen. So good luck to both. But this is what I see. And, you know, the vision that he's, ex like, how exciting is that for boxing? That we've got a path and we've got this plan for just brilliant fights in the division. But you've got to be careful, Eddie. Big I mean, time. you can't look past this guy. You were meant to, meant to fight Deontay Wilder, yeah. not you. Uh, yeah, I'd you. love to yeah, see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anthony Joshua against Deontay Wilder was meant to happen. So he was the biggest puncher in boxing. He's now fighting the biggest yeah. puncher in the world. Yeah, and, and I think that really that is the key here. And that's what AJ said. You know, I'm getting excited about Undisputed. He says, not for me. March the 8th, deal one by one with what's in front of you. And, and this fight, you know, Frank said the jeopardy in this fight. There isn't a huge amount, although now there is to gain from this fight because you're going to go into the unspooled. And I really like that because leading into this fight, without hearing that news, what is there to gain? Yes, you can do a better job than Tyson Fury, but who really cares? Like, we want World Heavyweight Championships. We want a vision at the end of this story for AJ, and that vision is undisputed. So if this is what it's going to take to get there, got to deal with it. It's not going to be easy. You know, when you're up in the clinch with this guy, you're going to know about it. And you saw Fury very quickly in this fight decide to just stay out of trouble, stay out of range. And this is a guy in Fury who's got a good chin, and, you know, he'll know. And 
you know, if he beats Alexander Usyk, maybe we'll bring him into camp for the last three weeks to give us a few tips. And that's our headline, by the way, Andy. <laughs> do, do you feel like he's got to the stage of his career now, Anthony, as well, where all of the things that have happened to him can really serve him? Because people talk about, you were talking about Jeopardy and people are talking about Ngannou and what big a threat he is and what level and all this kind of stuff. If he's ever tempted to think about any kind of complacency, Anthony, which I don't believe he would, but all he's got to do is think about June the 1st, Madison Square Garden 2019. He knows what can happen, doesn't he? He knows what can go wrong if you do look too far ahead. And that's what happens when you're up against someone that, you know, excuse my French, has the balls to throw with you, right? And that's the danger of Francis Ngannou. He will let his hands go when you let your hands go. If you look at the Fury knockdown, he waited, he waited for Fury to throw, and he threw with him. And, and that's what Andy Ruiz did when he was hurt. You've got to be on point at all times against this guy. He will be looking to drag you on the inside, bring you into a dogfight, let his hands go. But you've got to be so precise. But the one thing that I kept seeing in that fight with Tyson Fury is I was waiting for Francis and Garnu to gas. And I felt like there were times where it could happen, but Fury just didn't force the pace. But when you force the pace, all of a sudden you're bringing in extra danger. AJ can't afford to be too passive in this fight. He's got to be aggressive enough to slow him down, hurt him. That, that straight right hand to the body that he threw against Otto Wallin was brutal. You, you start sinking those in, you'll quickly run out of fuel. But, you know, I'm just, just so excited about the fight. And Francis is just one of those guys you look at and you just think, God, mate, you have to really, 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 really put me to sleep because you ain't going nowhere unless you're out cold. Yeah, absolutely. Eddie, I've got to ask you, the uh, the kind of heading into Fury versus Ngannou, of course, you were quite vocal in uh, your thoughts about the fight. Uh, I believe Southern Area title was mentioned as well. How are you uh, How are you finding all of this now, well, kind of talking up When Ngannou. I bumped into him outside, I must admit, I did, you know, I did potentially need a new pair of pants, but like, I still stand by. I think Francis Ngannou can lose at many different levels of heavyweight boxing. Like, I'm not subscribed to the fact that this guy would beat you know, half of the top 10. He could do, right? But I still think that even at British title level, this guy could get beat. But he could also destroy the opposition at that level because of the assets that he has. So on paper, as we saw in the Fury fight, this should be a relatively straight night's work unless you get chinned. But that's why this division is the only division where someone can stroll in. And someone talked earlier about Floyd Mayweather against Conor McGregor. You could run that a million times. Conor McGregor couldn't win that fight. I love him, but he just couldn't, right? You run this a million times, you're getting many different results. And, and, and you know, we just hope we get the one we want. Good luck, Eddie. Thank you for joining us. Thank and uh, I'm sure we'll see you in fight week. Thank you, Mr. Eddie Hearn.